Hey, what's going on guys? So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about making money as a developer. And the idea for this video comes from Florin Pop's new ebook called 10 plus plus ways to make money as a developer. And I'm just going to kind of go over the 10 different methods that he has and give you a little bit of my own insight and experience, let you know what they are. And if you want to dive deeper into these topics and get some really good quality information and experience, then definitely check out Florin's ebook. I'll have a link in the description with a, a code for 20% off. So let's jump right into it. The first one is the most obvious, which is making money as a professional web developer. So, so getting a job at a company, this is the most common route. So a lot of people learn how to code, whether they're self-taught, boot camp, college, whatever it might be. Then you start filling out applications. You start to go to interviews. You fail a shitload of interviews. We all do. Um, and then ultimately you land a job as a developer. And most of us get into coding because we really love it. We have a passion for it. So if you're able to make a good amount of money doing that, that's not a bad deal. As far as how much money, it really depends on where you are in the world. If you're in the U.S., what state, what city you're in, that really you know tilts to scales. So to give you an idea, a web developer in my area, which is the Boston area, is around 74k a year. Um, so low side is 50k, high side is 100, 108k. So you can get up to six figures as a web developer. If you're doing something like DevOps or uh, AI, I mean, there's there's other types of developers that make more money. Um, but this is typical for a web developer, at least in my area, which isn't too bad. So if you can make 80,000, 90, 100,000 dollars a year doing what you love, like I said, that's not a bad deal. So that's one way to go. That's kind of a, you know, your main route. Then you have freelancing, which is another way you, you can freelance on the side, but it can get really time consuming if you're trying to work for a company and freelance. So I would suggest doing one or the other, maybe starting with it on the side. And when you get your first few clients, you can move to really dedicate, you know, dedicating all your time to it if that's what you want to do. So I've done both. I prefer freelancing. I enjoy the freedom. There's something really fulfilling about doing your own thing, having your own business, but it is difficult and it's not for everyone. You have to be willing to take risks because you don't know if you're if you're going to make a ton of money this month or you're going to make no money, um, so it is it is kind of risky, but like I said, it's very rewarding and you can scale your business. You can outsource projects or parts of projects. Uh, I, I ended up hiring two in-house developers, so I mean. It depends on the type of person you are, whether you're going to get a job at a company or freelance. And to get started, you could start with sites like Upwork. Um, there's a whole bunch of websites where you can apply for different projects. You're probably going to make just scraps at first. That's at least what I did and what I know a lot of people I know have done. But as you build your portfolio and you build your ratings and reviews on these different websites, you can start to get higher paying jobs. Um, and definitely don't stick to just those websites. You want to go and look at local uh, businesses, small businesses, see where you can help, where you can you know, build them a better website with better functionality, better design. If you can create a, a little application that will you know, help them run their business in some way. Uh, and really just tailor your, when you pitch to these companies, these businesses, tailor your, um, your emails or whatever, if you're going to go talk to them, to their business. Don't just use some pre-made template. Um, so that's freelancing. The next one is, or the next few are really just side incomes to start with, but could get into something bigger. So number three is blogging, um, which is, is a type of content creation. So it's, it's, Obviously, it's writing. You don't have to be a great writer to start a blog. You just need to be able to offer some valuable information. Um, it could be like written tutorial type posts, or you could be talking about new new uh, technologies, new frameworks, or whatever it might be. Now, when you start a blog, it's not going to make money right away, just like most of these aren't. It takes a lot of time and dedication. And one thing that that I will say is really valuable for most of these, if not all of these, is having a social media presence. So you really want to do that along with all of these that I'm mentioning. Because if you have a following, if you have a social media presence, you can promote your blog, you can promote your, your products and so on. As far as making money with a blog, you can use ads. So, uh, you know, Google AdSense, you can have affiliate links to other people's products where you get a, a chunk of the, you know, the money that's that people pay for other products. You could promote your own products. You could potentially have sponsors that will sponsor your blog. So there's there's different avenues to take. 
So the next one is running a YouTube channel. And obviously this isn't for everyone. Not everyone is comfortable on camera or wants to be on camera or, you know, even do screencasts. I know that when you get started, even when I got started, I hated the sound of my own voice. I hated the sound of my accent, my Boston accent, which was much thicker back then. Um, but you eventually get used to it. And, and I just really fell in love with it. I fell in love with um, just creating tutorials and helping people out and creating little projects that, that nobody was telling me to make, no clients, no boss. I mean, it's just, it's very freeing to do what you want and have people watch it and enjoy it and learn from it. So I would say don't start a YouTube channel to make money because you're gonna be very, very disappointed. It takes It takes a long time just to even make uh, friggin, you know, $50 a month. It takes a while. So don't start it for that. If that's all you would start a YouTube channel for, don't skip this one. Um, but if it's something you enjoy doing, you're passionate about, you could eventually make a decent income, a uh, decent side income, or even move to full time if you get really successful. So the next one is live coding and streaming, which is similar to, to YouTube. I mean, you're, you're, teaching code basically on video, except it's live. Um, my, my recommendation would be to start YouTube first and or just any kind of pre-recorded video before you just can go live. And you're probably not gonna get anybody in there if you go on Twitch and, and you know nobody knows who you are and you start streaming. So I would, I would suggest putting some YouTube videos out, building a little audience. Again, social media presence, Twitter specifically uh, really helps just just get out there and get in the community. Um, but yeah, that's that's an option. Twitch has some really cool ways for people to donate. You have bits, you have subscriptions, Amazon Prime subscriptions. People can gift subs. So there's a lot of different ways. I haven't live streamed yet. I plan on doing it this year, and I'm probably going to do it on Twitch because I really like. I think that it's a better platform for live streaming than YouTube is. Uh, and Florin goes into this, you know, in detail in his book because he's done a lot of uh, live streaming on both Twitch and YouTube. So the next one is one-on-one -on -one mentoring. And this is something that um, I really haven't done, um, you know, at least at least for, for money. I've, I've helped people out here and there, but, uh, and of course I've done, you know, lots of content, but I haven't had experience like, like being paid to directly talk to someone and help them. But I do know quite a few people that do this for well over $100 an hour. So you can charge a, a good amount because when you, when you really know what you're doing and you're able to, to help someone out uh, directly, like not through a video, but directly where you can answer direct questions, um, that's worth a lot, you know. So use your experience as a developer to, to help others. Um, and even if you start with free mentoring, just just to kind of get your feet wet to see how it is, see if you can actually help people. Because um, not everybody that is a great a great developer can can really explain and teach people stuff. So maybe do it for free a couple times, um, and then maybe forty, fifty dollars an hour, move up to hundred dollars an hour. And I know people that do this for like two hundred and fifty dollars an hour. Um, so you can make pretty good money doing it. But like I said, I haven't really done it myself. Um, check Florin's book out. He's, he's done it quite a bit. So the next one is courses, um, which is of course another form of video content. So you can make a lot of money doing courses and it doesn't even have to be like, like direct tutorials or, or, um, you know, teaching a language or a framework. It could be a freelancing course, uh, a business course, whatever, anything that you have experience in. Um, working, you know, with a team using Git, open source. I mean, there's a lot of different topics that you could you could do a course on. And just because someone else has a course on it, and that goes for YouTube and this other stuff too. Just because someone else has done it doesn't mean that you won't be successful. You have a unique take. Everyone does. So that's something I see a lot. Is oh, there's so many of those out there that it's not going to be successful. There's a lot out there, but none of them are you with your exact take. Um, so don't let that like discourage you from doing any of this. But with courses, I would suggest doing free content first or even a free course first because free stuff is a lot easier to get eyes on. Um, so start a YouTube channel, uh, get build build a decent following. You don't have to have a hundred thousand subscribers, but try to get you know one two thousand subscribers and 
then create a course and promote your course to your YouTube audience. Um, and again, I can't say it enough, social media, Twitter, people are always um, promoting each other's courses and eBooks and stuff like that. So just something to think about. I know, I know video content isn't for everybody. The next one, digital products. Digital products could mean a lot of things. It can mean content like eBooks and courses, but it can also be uh, web apps, mobile apps, plugins for you know WordPress, Shopify, other platforms, themes and and, and uh, templates. So it could be a Bootstrap Bootstrap templates, WordPress templates. I know people that have made a lot of money just doing WordPress templates. So that's something you can think about. And there's a lot of other things. Anything that you can build and sell, even just like little tools here and there, you can make a good amount of money with. So take your skills and, and see what you can create that other people would, would find value in and would purchase. So digital products is, is definitely something that you could do on the side. So if you're working for a company or freelancing. So an example for me for selling digital products, I used to build WordPress and Joomla plugins. Uh, Joomla, a lot of you probably don't even know of. It's an older content management system. And uh, I sold them on my own platform. I had a suite of like eight different extensions. One was like a classifieds, one was a knowledge base, just different things you could add to your website. And I sold them for, you know, really cheap, but I had quite a few people buying them. Joomla had its own little marketplace where you could list your extensions. And I was, you know, up there rated uh, as the top rated extensions. And um, it didn't make me like a ton of money where I could quit my job, but it was a nice, decent side income and something I enjoyed doing. And once I built out the extensions, I mean, there wasn't much else I had to do. I did have a support ticket system in the website where people, if they had problems, they could send in a ticket. But that was maybe an hour a week, you know, an hour out of my week. So it was pretty much passive income. Um, and that's something that I would definitely encourage you to do if, if you can build something that, uh, that people are, are willing to buy. So the next one is contributing to open source or building something, building an open source product. And obviously, you know, open source software is, is publicly available software and a lot of it is free. You usually think free when you think open source. And there's different ways you can still make money by creating a free open source product. So one is, is contributions. Um, if you create something that's free that people like, you can set up a Patreon. You also have um, uh, GitHub sponsors. Now, now GitHub has its own kind of like Patreon built in where people can directly contribute and support you uh, for creating you know, open source projects. Another thing you could do is you could have a free version and then you could have something paid that people can get as kind of an add-on. So an example for that is like Tailwind CSS, which is a free open source CSS framework, but then there's also Tailwind UI, which is a paid product. So if people want to take it a step further, they can purchase um, Tailwind UI. And there's, there's so many different things like that. And you can make a good amount of money with it. And you're also you know, creating a, a, a good product and um, you know, contributing to the, uh, to the open source community. So the next one is, or the last one is creating a SaaS, which is a software as a service. So basically this means that you create some kind of um, hosted product that's usually licensed out monthly, people pay monthly, yearly. And some examples of that are like Trello, Figma, Basecamp, um, uh, Dropbox, and then there's a lot of like hosting services. And I know these are the real big guys, but you could create something smaller and license it out and maybe even create a little startup around it. If you have a couple people that are willing to help out, you know, a few friends that are developers. Um, and it, it can take a lot of time to create a SaaS, at least a successful one. Um, I know people are creating them left and right, but it takes a lot of time and dedication to create a successful one. But if it does become successful, I mean, you can make a lot of money creating a, um, you know, a SaaS. Um, I don't have experience with it, so I can't say too much on it, but definitely another thing you could do as a developer. So those are the 10 ways to make money as a developer. I mean, obviously there's, there's much more than that, but these are 10 that you could look into. If you want to dig deeper into these topics, check out Florin's ebook. Again, link is in the description with a promo code. But that's it, guys. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.